Yo, what's up everybody? It's Chris and Rich from Da Vinci Boas coming to you with another video. We told you we'd be back. We're back. Today it's uh, it's feeding day. Lunch time. Not for us, but for the snakes. But Rich is going to fill you in on how he feeds yeah. the snakes. Tell, you know, give you some information on the right and wrong things to do, or the right and wrong ways to feed a snake. Um, but before we get started, Rich did a, um, a, a podcast yesterday. Oh, with, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did a podcast with uh, Carlos Andres from uh, Boa Rack Radio. Michael Roscoe was the co-host. Uh, we did about an hour and a half interview. So you guys can go check it out. We'll try to put a link under here. You guys can go check it out on the Facebook page. Um, it was about Central American boas and about where I come from, how long I've been doing it, the success that I've had. So go check it out. Let me, get, let, uh, let me know what you guys think. Sweet. And we will see you guys in just a minute. Deuces. Back at it. All right, back at it. Dusty's like a regular uh, Steven <clears throat> Spielberg over there. Driving me nuts. <laughs> oh, where did I end up? I do the Pandoras. No. There. So they can get larger meals because they're over six months old. Established feeders can eat a little more of a larger meal. Like this guy, he's only a few months old. He's small, so he's going to have to get a hopper. Now, the difference between, uh, is there any difference in the feeding of, a, of a, a, a BCI or a BCC? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so it's a good point you brought up. BCCs are very finicky. They're very sensitive when they're younger. Um, they will give the food back to you. They'll regurgitate the food back up if you feed them too big of a meal or too many times. So you want to slow feed all your BCC animals. Th those are your Guyanans, your True Red Tails, your Peruvians, your Surinams, stuff like that. You want to slow feed them as babies. And after that year-old hump, they'll be able to get over and eat bigger meals and not regurge them. Whereas the Central Americans, the BCIs, they're, they're solid feeders as babies. Just keep them slow, keep them, you know, I always slow grow everything. Um, you know, feed them smaller and then you can start upgrading their meals as they age. Right. Yeah. Now are there any gene traits that are different? Like any dream, gene traits that might have uh, crossed with BCC somewhere along the line that would make a difference in a feeding? I don't think so. No. I don't, nobody knows why they're sensitive feeders. I mean, they've been this way for as long as I can remember, as well as long as whoever taught me can remember. It's just, you just got to learn from it. You right. know, feed them smaller meals, feed them, you know, uh, longer feedings. And then after that certain amount of time, which could be about a year, they'll eventually get to a point to where that you won't have to worry about, worry about right. it anymore. Right. So. Good stuff. Yeah. And Central Americans, you want to feed smaller as, as babies because they're born half the size of a Colombian. So that's another thing you want to do is feed smaller meals to smaller animals. You know, a, a lot of these guys want to feed big prey to these small animals to, to get them bigger. That doesn't work. That just hurts the animal in the long run. Um, and they figure it out. You know, you'll still be able to breed her, but it's going to take a lot of time off of her life if you breed her early and she has a litter early she's gonna die much quicker. So if you're power feeding a female mm -hmm. to, to breed at the three year mark, when mm -hmm. you really should, you know, there's sexual three, maturity. Three years is sexual maturity. That's when she realizes, okay, I can have babies. That doesn't mean you can breed her. That right. doesn't mean you should breed her, but a lot of people do. Three to four years is the solid time period. And after their first litter, they become way more mature. Um, they get bigger after their first litter. They eat better after their first litter, and their second litter is going to be a little bit larger and yeah. more healthy. It's just the first litter is the worst litter. That's what I try to tell people. And it's not always that way. I mean, I have people that breed first year boas and they have perfect litters, but most of the time, your first is your worst. That's one thing you want to go by. And um, if you rush the breeding process, the snake's life, get, you might as well give is, up. Yeah, is going to yeah, go from 20 years to six, seven, eight years. Yeah, damage is done at that point. That's why I tell everybody to slow grow stuff. You know, pay attention, find somebody that you could trust, that you can get on the phone, that you could become a friend with, and, and trust the information they're giving to you. Whether that be me, him, anybody, any other breeders out there, we're going to guide you in the right direction. Not everybody is as nice as me, and I'll, you could figure that out on your own. Um, I was blessed with the knowledge of everything that I have and being nice to people. That could hurt me too, and it has hurt me. But, yeah, but you know, never change your way, and that's oh, no. how that's how I got to know Rich. Rich just yeah. kind of took me under his wing with the boas, and uh, you know. Yeah, I don't change been... anything. It is what it is. Um, you know, if 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 I have a problem with somebody, I just don't deal with them ever again. It's just that simple. Move on. Move on. But back to the feedings. Um, we feed 
probably about 250 uh, babies every week mm -hmm. and about another 200 adults, 250 adults every week, every three weeks to six weeks for the adults. Uh, the bigger the animal is, the less you want to feed it because they, ha they do not have a metabolism like we do. They don't move as much as we do, so they don't burn as much fat. Um, so you want to feed them less, but feed them a bigger meal. Like some of my girls, you know, five, six, seven foot females, you want to feed them every six to seven weeks, but you want to feed them a good meal. Yeah. Two jumbos, a small rabbit, you know, give them a good sized meal, right. that way they can get through those six right. weeks. Where these guys, you know, we have their heat at 90 degrees, which is a hot spot, we keep them at 90 degrees, and then we feed them every seven to 10 days, depending on defecation. Right. Um, very big on that, by the way. Good, good. So. We'll go ahead and feed some of these guys. All right, guys, thanks once again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the, the feeding videos, and I hope Rich was able to teach you a lot once again. Um, it's kind of a sad day because we just found out the state's getting on lockdown, so yeah, they're still going to bring you videos, unfortunately. I think I mentioned it earlier. I won't be able to come over here to, to be a part of it. So For the time being. Anyway, we'll keep watching. We'll still be in touch, and uh, we'll figure something out. Hope everybody's safe, healthy, and happy at home. Rich? Yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you, want to, if you want to know anything, just hit us up in the comments. I'll get back with you as fast as I can. But like he said, Dusty and I are going to try to keep doing these videos a couple of weeks and see what we can do for you guys. Anything you want to see, anything you want me to answer, just let me know. And please, 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 thumbs up. Hit the yeah, notification subscribe, button. Share, subscribe, share, comment, please. Thank you so much, guys. Thank we you. love you very much. See ya. Deuces.